everybody, welcome back to another Independence Title Town Hall. Today we have an amazing topic. We're talking about the CARES Act. So many people have been asking me, you see I talk about it on a lot of posts, a lot of um, internet posts that I do, a lot of videos that I do. We're talking about the CARES Act in regard to the COVID-19 disaster. And we decided to bring on a tax expert uh, today to talk to you a little bit about some of the programs that are available, maybe some of the grant programs, how you can apply, what you should do, maybe where you can apply, because we all know a lot of people are getting locked out. The big people who know people got the money and the ones that don't know anyone, unfortunately, you're left uh, barely with even an application uh, number that you applied. So today we're going to bring on Shannon. Shannon is actually uh, my sister-in-law, she graduated from the University of Miami with a master's in professional accounting. Uh, she has over 15 years of tax experience, and she's become a true expert understanding how to help business owners navigate some of the grant programs and some of the challenges in regard to the COVID-19. So Shannon, welcome to the call. Hello, thanks for having me today. I appreciate it. <laughs> awesome. For anyone that likes this post, you want to put a comment, we have the comment feed coming up on the side. We'll be happy to try and get to some of your questions uh, as we go on in this presentation. But I did want to uh, ask Shannon a couple of questions that some people sent in before uh, and just some of this, a little bit of a guide on just, you know, maybe some things you can do as a business owner. So the, the first one, obviously, we know you've been doing accounting for 15 years. What made you decide to get into the CARES Act? Yes. Well, um, of my 15 years experience, the last seven have really been in a, a specialty tax service planning. Um, we've been helping businesses minimize their tax liabilities. You know, I'm a small business owner, just like most of the people on this call. Uh, we primarily work in um, with research and development tax credits, uh, cost segregation, a 179D tax deduction. But really, we all work in all areas of tax. Um, Throughout my career, I've helped uh, thousands of businesses save tax dollars, everybody from uh, mom and pop down the street to um, billionaires, you know, people, um, names that you would know well. Um, but when the CARES Act passed, obviously this was a different animal that we had never seen before. Um, my clients, my friends, um, my dad, who's a broker, um, my brother, who's a realtor, um, everybody started reaching out to me you know, asking, you know, this is really complex, you know, do you think you could uh, look into this and let us know how can I take advantage of this? So um, from late March to now, uh, my team and I, we've been on top of the changes. They're happening hourly, as you all uh, see on TV through the um, weekly or the daily briefings. Um, we've pivoted for the past three weeks. And luckily, over these past three weeks, we've helped over 49 companies um, fund get funded through this PPP program. And it's been almost uh, four million dollars in forgivable funding. So it's something um, that we're really proud of. You know, these are such unprecedented times that um, you know we're just we're happy to be here. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I've told people, you know, it's all about the relationship. If you don't have a relationship with your accountant, your bank, uh, your payroll company, you know, generating the reports that were needed. You know, we got very very lucky with our bank, and and we were able to get our first quarter payroll reports done. We were able to get our tax return done and we were literally ready. So the second they opened up the application process, we were literally right there uh, applying. So, you know, it's, it's all about who you know. And I always tell people, bank small, be careful banking with these large banks because a lot of these people have not been able to, to get their application mm -hmm. even submitted. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit. So, you know, the, we, we did a video on Friday. We were talking about how obviously the money ran out super quick and we saw the breaking news and, and we even asked a couple of people and they're like, no, no, no. I'm like, I'm telling you the money ran out. And of course the next day, which I believe that was Tuesday or Wednesday. And then it was the following day that they broke the news uh, that obviously the, the $350 billion uh, ran out. So, so now what? They obviously have a bill they're looking to pass to fund more money. Uh, what do they do if, if they didn't get an application number? You know, we, we talked a little bit earlier before we started the live feed that we received what's called an e-tran number, which is like a transaction mm -hmm. number, which means our money is supposedly earmarked in that first round. Uh, but I tell people until it's in my account, I, I won't swear by it. Uh, but if they applied for it, now what? Well, you're exactly right. Um, a lot of my big clients have relationship with the big banks. We all know um, they thought they were OK. And the problem was um, these big banks, quite frankly, they got bogged down. And the other thing that was not fair was the independent contractors had to wait a week and then they didn't release the rules until Tuesday. And by Thursday, 
you know, the funds were gone. This happened to my brother. He didn't get through um, because there's only two days there. Um, but through the process, like you mentioned, what we've learned this past um, three weeks is that the fastest and by far the easiest place to receive funding is through community banks. Um, most of these are banks that people on this call have probably never even heard of. Um, these are banks that we have relationships with. Um, we've worked with um, banks across the country um, and we expect the same this time around. Um, something also that's extremely important is you have to submit a flawless application. I cannot stress this enough because you, your application is going to get to the top of the pile. And if you, it is not right, it gets get moved down to the bottom of the pile. So that's something where we've been really um, grateful and that we're experienced. So we know where we can put our clients through seamlessly. Um, but to everyone who applied, who didn't get it funded, I would say go apply for a couple community banks, um, Google it. We have a list if anybody wants to email me after the call. Um, all 50 states, we have the top 100 um, SBA community banks um, who we have relationships with or we've been on the phone with helping clients get approved. Um, there's also places like uh, Lendio um, and PayPal. Um, these are online portals that process applications but um, they were the fastest last time around from what we saw as far as getting applications through. Um, just to give everybody an idea of the urgency of this, uh, last night I was speaking to a, a senior executive at a, um, a local community bank and he thinks the funds will um, run out in, in two days when it gets approved. I don't know if that's true or not, but there's just such a sense of urgency that I can't stress it enough that you have to get the loan application right and apply for multiple sources. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think they definitely are going to run out. You know, Paul here, I put up a, a little comment here. He says he applied on the SBA website for payroll protection. He has an application number, but hasn't heard anything else. So now that they're out of money, does he have to apply again? Or would his application stand keep him in line? It honestly depends on the bank probably is who it's going through. Um, some banks, most banks are keeping your place in line and they stay in case in the future. But if I were you, I would apply elsewhere. Um, look up local community banks. Um, there's one, I'm on the West coast of Florida, Sanibel Captiva Bank. I had never heard of that bank. They're funding all local businesses around here. I've personally have funded um, a bank in Atlanta, a very small bank. I had um, 12 companies get funded through this one bank um, out of state clients, not even in state clients. So I can't recommend, it doesn't have to be a local bank, reach out to all different types of community banks. All right. So Paul, great question. And uh, glad we were able to answer. He called me earlier and said, would you be able to answer his question? So I told him you got to get on. So thank you. Um, all right. So let's shift it a little bit. So, so people like, um, uh, they're, they're funded, right? So, so let's say someone like me, I was included in the, the, the first round, uh, and we're supposed to get our money by, by this Friday and, and I get funded. Now, what do I do? I get this money. It gets deposited, I'm assuming, into our general operating account. Uh, and, and what is the business owner supposed to do at that point? Uh, Kevin, that's a great question. And it's extremely important one since um, now people have started to receive their funds. Um, they take five to 10 days to clear the SBA website. So people like you have your number. You're going to get funded any day. Um, so the day you receive your funds, an eight week clock starts. Um, during this time, 75% of the money you received must be spent on payroll. Um, the other 25% per, um, can be spent on maybe rent, uh, mortgage interest, utilities. But what we are doing is we are recommending that our clients use a special PPP bank account just for this purpose um, and save all of the backup documentation. Uh, we have an internal spreadsheet um, that we have given to all of our clients to use. Um, there will be a certification document that every bank is going to require that you have to sign off on. Um, and every bank is going to have subtle differences, just like uh, with the application process. Um, there's not one streamlined process, um, which is good and bad. And then what we're recommending is um, after that eight weeks uh, expires and weeks uh, nine and ten, uh, we're recommending that you reach out to your bank, um, you submit how you use the funds um, so you can get as much forgiven as possible. Um, what we definitely do not want to happen is uh, we don't want someone to be funded and misuse the funds. And then now they have to repay 100% of this loan. 
Um, obviously, if the whole loan isn't forgiven, that's okay because remember, this is a loan. It's one percent interest in two years, new no prepayment penalty. So it's not the end of the world if you don't get one hundred percent forgiven. But you want to get as much forgiven as possible. Absolutely. I mean, listen, a loan is a loan, you know, which actually kind of brings me into my next idea where we were talking about these idle loans and and you know, I was actually consulting with NBC and and the Wall Street Journal talking about the idle loans because they everyone was advertising every webinar I was on they're advertising up to two million dollars idle loan I'm like guys you're missing the boat because I was approved and then literally the next day in writing they said programs no longer available it changed uh, mm -hmm. and they're still advertising up to two million dollars and I'm like that's not available they're mm -hmm. approving up to fifteen thousand dollars plus the ten thousand dollar advance which again then got changed to the um, ten thousand dollars per employee. So, how does that affect like some of these? We have a lot of realtors and and investors, but ten ninety nine contractors. So, where they thought they were approved, going to get ten thousand dollars. I guess if they're by themselves, they'll only get a thousand dollars. Unfortunately, your yes and right as well is the answer to my question. So, for the realtors, it looks like the last the last thing they're doing is they're approving a thousand dollars an employee. So what we're expecting is all these 1099 contractors to get the thousand dollars. And then what we're seeing is we're going to get 50% uh, of your gross receipts from last year. Uh, remember, this is still a good loan. It's about 3.75% interest. Um, it's a 30 year loan. So they're good terms. Um, there's no prepayment penalty, so you can uh, pay it back whenever you want. Um, so the realtors, unfortunately, they're not being very kind to them because you're getting the per employee thousand dollar advance and you're only getting yourself as an advance um, or the bigger companies are, are getting a thousand dollars per employee up to ten thousand dollars but you still can take advantage of this and they're still very good terms which is important all right so you can get a loan up to, up to two million dollars three point seven five percent thirty year loan uh the only downside remember has to be paid back right mm -hmm. I mean, that's the only downside so before you start leveraging your business out there you just want to make sure like what are you going to use that money for and something we spoke about earlier with which you know it's, it's notable to mention to them is you cannot use it on the same items you're going to use the ppp loan for you can get both but you're just not allowed to use it for the same item so you can't use payroll for both or or rent for both um because that would get you in trouble i guess Yes, that's extremely important is during that eight week window, if you're approved for both loans, we're recommending that you do not commingle those funds and you do not use that EIDL or EIDL loan for payroll whatsoever, because we don't want, you know, a loan officer to come back and say, you cross mingled these funds. You know, this loan is not forgivable. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So since you've been doing this a long time and, and you're the expert we brought on, what are some of the hidden secrets we can tell people about the CARES Act and maybe some things they, they don't already know about? One thing that nobody is seeming to talk about that I think is going to be one of the most underrated parts of this CARES Act is um, the NOL carry back. Um, if a business or an individual, so this isn't just big business, this is small business and individuals. If you had a loss in 2018 or 19, or are gonna have one in 2020, which is gonna really apply to a lot of these people. Once the return is filed, we can go back and carry back that loss for five years. Um, so basically what we can do is we can take the taxes that were paid in in the past and we can put that money into our clients' pockets. Um, so this can result in immediate refund of taxes paid uh, for prior years for our clients. Um, what we're doing at the Tatcher Group is we are having um, strategic tax planning for a lot of our clients. Maybe they have a big investment property. We can go do a cost segregation prior year, create this loss, and then go back five years to get this money back. Or maybe you're an architect, um, and just by designing work, you're going to qualify for an R&D tax credit. Um, we can go back, take that in prior years, and then get you this money that you've already paid into the government. Um, there's just a lot of um, ways to manipulate this NOL carry back that people aren't talking about, which is kind of surprising me. Um, a second area is, um, and this is only for, you know, larger, small and medium sized businesses is uh, this Main Street lending program. It uh, launches May 1st, so it hasn't come out yet. But what it is, it's well, it's a loan. It's not forgivable. So you have to pay it back. Um, it is uh, if you had earnings or EBITDA of uh, $250,000 or greater last year, you can qualify. It's um, four times your EBITDA. Um, it's a four-year loan, about 4% interest, uh, no prepayments. 
um, penalties and um, payment in principle are, or payment for principal and interest, excuse me, are not due for one year. So it's a good fit for a lot of businesses. You can use it to grow your business. I'm interested to see um, what kind of traction this gets. Um, like I said, it doesn't launch till May 1st, so only early details are out on that. So we'll see more what comes. And then um, another area is um, there's payroll tax credit refunds that are available to owners. If you have employees who had coronavirus or they had to miss time because they were taking care of um, someone who was sick with it, um, you can go ahead and, and get a payroll tax credit refund. Um, some other things people aren't even talking about um, are um, the employer retention tax credit. Um, there's payroll tax deferrals, but you have to be careful with these last two because you cannot use them if you were if you were funded for a PPP loan. But if you miss the PPP loan, just know that there's other programs available out there for you. Or maybe you're not a good fit for a PPP loan. You're, you're a restaurant who's closed and maybe you only have a small payroll. There's other options available to you that really are not getting discussed at the moment. Absolutely. Yeah, I was telling uh, one, one of my friends you know, has a very small payroll. And I said, well, before you apply for the loan, make sure you talk with your accountant or, or you know, talk to, to your attorney, your banker and figure out, is there another option? Because, you know, maybe getting the, the that 50% credit may be more in, in their best interest. Um, you know, so like you said, you really want to look at all of the options. But again, for those of you that are watching, do not make a move. You know, we don't do anything unless we ask our attorney, our accountant, our payroll mm -hmm. company, we, we don't make a move because we don't want to put ourselves in a position like with the idle loan. The, the gentleman said I was approved on the on Friday. And then I'm like, well, hold on. Let me think about it. I had to make sure I talked to our attorney, talk to our accountant. And they said, be careful. Don't accept it yet because we don't know if you'll still be eligible for the PPP loan. We need to verify that first. And then eventually they verified it. But they said it wasn't available and then it was available again. So. Um, you know, there's so much confusion and, you know, it's almost like when, when you talk to, to your banker, you know, you're screaming at your banker and just realize your banker is still earning probably the same salary they were earning before and they don't deserve the attack that you're giving them. You know, our, our, our uh, banker, we've been very kind to. Um, are we a little impatient? Well, like anyone, but it's all about respect. You have to give them the respect that they deserve. They're working hard just as you are, just as they are. You know, they're at a loss trying to help hundreds of people that all want to be first in line but you can't all be first right so so you know just, just everyone needs to just sit back things are going to work out uh you know and, and people are going to get the help that uh that they need um so we talked about a couple of other tie and we're going to post this as well online so you'll be able to replay this for everyone that's watching you don't have to write everything down if you have any questions we have shannon's information scrolling at the bottom of the video uh, but we talked about as the business owner, you know, uh, some of the options that they have maybe with different types of programs. What about funding? What other sources of funding? We talked about the idle loan. We talked about the PVP loan. I know in Florida, there was the Florida disaster loan. I was one of the mm -hmm. first 200 to apply for it. And then I guess when you go to the website, it's down now. I think they canceled it and rolled it into mm -hmm. the um, into the idle loan. But what else is available for, for the small business owner? And that's something that nobody else is talking about, like I said, as well, is all these additional funding options outside of the CARES Act. You know, right now, as we're speaking at uh, three o'clock today, the Chamber of Commerce, they are launching a, a website. Um, it's called SaveSmallBusiness.com. And every small business with three to 25 employees can go on and apply. And it's a $5,000 grant, so it doesn't have to be repaid. Um, I, we've encouraged all of our small businesses that qualify, um, go on there right now and apply. Um, we don't know the entire application process, um, but it can't hurt to apply because it's free business or free money. Um, I yeah, I know there, there's tons of these programs out there. Um, and I got an email actually from a client today that said 3 PM click on this link. And I was like, ah, that's a scam. Well, I guess it wasn't a scam. That's probably no, that. no. Save smallbusiness.com. Everybody go there and go apply. $5,000 grant. Three to 25 employees is the only caveat. Um, and there's also so many um, state and local resources. Um, we have gone through all 50 states um, to help our clients. Um, I think in Florida, there are six programs, if I remember correctly. Um, small businesses can apply for additional funding. Um, there's the the state small um, business credit initiative. Uh, there's the Grow America Fund. 
uh, the lift fund, um, email me if you need any of these resources. Um, but this is all for additional funding. Um, Grants.gov. Um, the last time I checked, which was uh, last night, they had almost uh, 3,000 uh, small business grants. These are grants. It's not loans that have um, for small businesses. Um, Facebook. They're giving away $3,000 grants. So if you're a realtor, you've never advertised on Facebook, go look it up. You can get $3,000 of free advertising. Can't hurt. Um, Google for their AdWords. They're giving away grants as well. Um, you had to be a prior customer for Google, I believe. Um, but but go look. Um, there's also a capital program that uh, QuickBooks, uh, they've launched. Um, the only stipulation had to be um, if you had a bank account uh, that were connected through QuickBooks and the business had $50,000 in revenue over the past 12 months, uh, you can go in and apply. But there are thousands of these programs out there and they keep coming out daily. So we are really encouraging all of our clients, just just go and apply because it can't hurt. I know Sarah Blakely, she's launched um, a small business application for women owned businesses. I think you only have to have one employee. Um, there's just thousands of these dollars that are that are there right now for the funding. And you don't know, you know, when that's going to run out. So go apply. And now our our comment feed is blowing up for the safe small business guys. The website's down. It's three twenty one. Oh. I'm sure the entire country, every chamber member, and then some across the country are down. Um, so just keep refreshing it. It did eventually come up for me. Uh, so so just keep refreshing it. But it was savesmallbusiness.com. You can check it out uh, and apply. And and we're going to get a list of, of some stuff and. And Shannon's information, her email address, her website is on this uh, on this this video, so you'll be able to connect with her and uh, you know get, get a lot of different information. Um, just don't pick her brain for free. You want to hire her? She's available. You can hire her services, uh, you know, and and ask her so she can help you out. Um, so again, thank you for that. What what else? So so now we're going to wrap up. We're at about twenty, almost twenty five minutes here. Uh, what 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 should someone do? They're gonna, we're going to hang up this video. They're a small business or maybe an independent real estate agent that's 1099, and and their business is obviously uh, getting crushed right now. If there's someone who is doing one deal a month, you know their, their business may be crushed. Uh, what do they do? What 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 should they do besides panic? Don't watch the news and panic. They need to do something strategic. What should it be? I think the most important thing to do is really just act. Act to save your business. Um, this is the CARES Act we're talking about. And the worst thing you can do is sit on the sidelines and, and watch the news. Um, my team's been working overtime the past three weeks. Um, we tend to keep working overtime until you know these PPP and idle funds um, have run out, but then there's gonna be something else. There's gonna be you know a fourth, a fifth package coming through Congress. Pay attention, um, act to save your business. Um, because like I said, the save small business, um, website through the chamber that just came out. Um, that was just launched, I believe late last week. So, you know, keep your head to the ground and see, you know, what was available for funding for grants. Um, go to that um, grants.gov, see if anything there is a good fit for you. Um, obviously, you know, I, I know that my, my dad is a broker, his, his agents have, you know, the industry has just slowed down, but it'll come back, I think, um, and just act and see, you know, what programs are available for you. Awesome. Well, thank you. So, uh, Denise had said thanks for a wealth of information. And uh, Ryan, yes, it is his family member, my sister-in-law. So it's not brother and sister; it's it's uh, mm -hmm. sister-in-law. Uh, but Ryan's a good client of mine, and uh, you know, very dear friend. We'll be on a webinar with him in a couple of days, uh, talking about some of this stuff as well. So, um, all right. So we're going to wrap up this call. I, I hope most of you enjoyed. We had a, a very large viewing, a lot of shares, a lot of likes. I am going to post this on our YouTube channel uh, here shortly, so you'll be able to replay it, ask any questions you want as always. Um, and we have a lineup of amazing videos coming up this week. And don't forget the number one thing people did last week is they took us up on the offer about the Rescue Your Business book. So email Dave at titlerate.com if you wanna get a copy of Rescue Your Business. It is totally free, not a PDF. I am actually going to mail you a physical copy of our book, Rescue Your Business, so you can read it today. Because even if you get through this global pandemic, which all of us are going to do, the market correction will come. We don't know when, one year, three years, five years, it will come and you need to set your business up so you do not fail. You know, We put ourselves in a very good position learning from the crash of 2008, how we're now able to survive this global pandemic doing 
40, 50, 60 percent less business during this last month than than we were doing this time last year. And how do you survive as a business? A lot of my tips and tricks are, are in that book. So email Dave, uh, David at titlerate.com. Thank you again, Shannon, for, for coming on the call. Maybe we'll schedule another one as you start getting some more information. You did great today and uh, hopefully you'll get some business out of it. You've added extreme value to, I, I know my entire community here, uh, and we look forward to hopefully helping them survive their business. So thank you. Well, thanks for having me and everybody just act. I mean, you know, we don't know what's out there until you start looking to help save your business. Absolutely. So thank you all very much. Here's Shannon's website, the Thatcher Group. Dot com. As always, I look forward to seeing everyone at the closing table as soon as we open them back up. Have a great day. Stay safe. Ask me any questions you may have. Since 2003, Independence Title has been the leading provider of title insurance, real estate, and mortgage closing services in Fort Lauderdale, as well as throughout the entire state of Florida. Independence Title, come close with us.